South Africa's first shipment of avocados finally arrived more than a year after the deal was signed at last year's BRICS summit in Johannesburg. And that shows that when there's collaboration between the two countries in terms of promoting trade, in aligning the protocols, because there was a lot of work done by our Department of Agriculture as well to get that access. South Africa is the third African country after Kenya and Tanzania to gain access to the Chinese market. Avo producers are hoping to capitalize on this by showcasing the first batch at the upcoming China International Import Expo. Through this show, Chinese buyers from the different provinces of China do come, or you have retailers that are looking to support. So showcasing in that type of growth allows you to get new business, but also repeat business to also widen your importers or your buyers or your distributors. Each buyer on that end has very specific um, needs uh, and markets that they serve. In our case, we have the partner. We are, it's, it's easy for us because we're tapping into Mission's global network, which is well established and well developed with our partner in China. The country is confident this will usher in a new era for the agricultural sector. It will also help balance the trade scales, which remain heavily in favor of the continent's biggest trade partner. And our hope on our side is that there will be deepening of trade, not only on avocado, but also on a range of other fruits that South Africa is interested in putting into market and also within the meat market. Because their goal amongst the BRICS members is ensure that we deepen agricultural trade amongst ourselves. China's growing avocado market presents a lucrative opportunity for South African producers. Farmers have worked hard to increase plantings specifically for export markets. Not only does this create more jobs, but it also increases foreign exchange earnings and boosts South Africa's economy, which has been trapped in a low growth cycle for more than a decade. Julie Shar, CGTN, Cape Town.